Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the show. Take it on, Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. Dre DiMatteo is here. You know, we're from Sons of Anarchy and, of course, The Sopranos for all those seasons. Maybe the best show on TV ever. ever. I <laughs> think so. Yeah. You'll uh, take we'll, that? We'll call it that little mafia show, since I can't say anything about it, clearly. Oh, is that a, I mean, is that an issue? I guess so. I mean... I mean, we're all in, we're all behind bars when it comes to talking about our shows at the moment. What is why the strike? Oh, yeah. it's the strike. Oh, I didn't know if it was some Sopranos thing or I. I never know what the reasons. Well, that it used are to for be anything that. anymore. <laughs> On the show, we weren't allowed to talk about anything. So, uh, for you. Did you know you were a part of something early with this? Like, did you know what it was going to be? Did you have a feeling that this product, this art, was different and was going to be received in a in a different way? I definitely did. I'm, I grew up uh, in the theater. My mom's a playwright, and she taught playwriting. So reading that script, I mean, I'm probably not, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but it's like, I mean, I feel like I'm allowed to do whatever I want because I'm here on your show, That's so fuck right. it. That's right. Um, the rules here. Yeah, fuck it, who cares? But uh, yes, I knew when I read it and I and I called her up and I go, Mom, I just read a script that will blow your fucking mind away. I said, it'll never get made, it's too good, but it's pretty beautiful. And um, it was the, the pilot with the ducks and the whole thing. And, and I was reading it to her over the phone page by page. And then the show was, I just thought it was too good to ever have a shot. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean, sad that <laughs> yeah. when you go, oh, this is too good. They're never going to go for this. Because the, the problem with the too good is most of the time, the people making the decisions on whether it goes or not aren't as good as the material is. And so they can't really tell. Like I've always said, I, I think if you took most dogs, they would prefer eating they would prefer eating cheap ground round you know 22 percent fat uh beef rather than a tomahawk steak like i i think they would prefer the junk i That's think they would analogy. prefer the spam like <laughs> yes. it's it's not it's not only that they're not really good enough to get the good cut or to understand it they'd actually prefer it, the other one because it's kind of fatty and salty and it smells and they they're kind of attracted to it, so it's not even a it's not even a coin toss. Sometimes with executives, they prefer the junk, yeah, over the over the good stuff. Appeal to the masses, but evidently there was enough juice over there, and I think that's why a lot of these. I, I don't even know what the Emmy count was last time, but. The notion, I don't know, a few years ago where it's like HBO had 118 nominations and CBS had 14. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like at a certain point, I think uh, I think the cream will rise to the top. Yeah. I, I think with that show, though, it had it had something for everybody. You know, people who were looking for a mafia show, they found that. People who wanted a family show, it was right there. It just, it had all those different dynamics. So sort of universal. Yeah. So for you, uh, and we're talking OnlyFans here. <laughs> All right. I don't know how that works. Now call Neither me, do I. Call me naive. <laughs> we're going to learn together. There's right a now. way people can make money without leaving their bedroom. Um, uh, for me, my closet. Your closet. Yes, my messy closet. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really know. The original intent for that um, was to start a possible, this is going to sound crazy, but to start a sort of a podcast on there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't on like- On OnlyFans. Yes, because the kind of stuff that we're interested in and talking about these days, just it would be censored all day long anyway. So we figured, why not go over here? And you know, you can just rub my feet. Me and my boyfriend, Robbie, um, I was like, you can just rub my feet and we can talk about politics all day. <laughs> <laughs> and so the thing, now here's, I guess what I would say. I have a 17 year old daughter. And I guess if she said, I'm going to join OnlyFans, mm. but I'm just going to do tasteful stuff of me in a one-piece bathing suit. I'd say no. <laughs> I would say, well, that's fine. But the problem <laughs> with that is it's it's a stepping stone to pornography. Like, eventually, you're going to be naked. Well, I think, I mean, I was talking to one of these agents about it, because I don't know how to handle all of this stuff. I, I, it really was not... 
in- fully intentional to stay on it and do this thing. But when we, I, I threw a picture up just to hold the place because I had just gotten the whole thing set up. What was the picture? Oh, it was some picture of me in a bikini, like bent over, you know, all, I, I don't take selfies. So if you look at my Instagram, like I'm under the radar. I'm not one of these, the last pictures taken of me were probably when I was in my 20s. Um, I stopped doing all press and everything after Sopranos. I was sort of just, you know, I focused on a lot of different things, not the, not this industry. But um, so, yes, I, I threw up a photo of myself and oh, I think we're it wasn't even it. that. That was Insta- That's Instagram. That was like a like a I'm breaking up with my boyfriend. Let's post a bikini <laughs> shot. Oh, it yeah. looks like one good. Of the, one of the very few pictures. But that's years ago, too. Um, but honestly, with this whole only like if my daughter said she was. I would be like, why? You have your whole life ahead of you. I'm at the end of my life. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know me what too. I mean? Like, it's over. <laughs> who cares? Like, and my kids were the ones who suggested it. was my, my daughter's best friend was like, Dre, just put pictures of your feet up and it'll go through the roof. It doesn't matter. You'll make money. Because totally. we're trying to raise money for different things. And I don't know if Jenny gave you a, a little bit of a history of our situation, but I, um, I've had a really rough three years. So a lot of people who made a lot of nasty comments about me joining Instagram, uh, a lot of it might be somewhat true. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a Instagram liar. or OnlyFans. Um, oh, did I say Instagram? You did. Yeah. I'm not tech savvy fans. enough to know. If, I don't. I don't. If that's no, correct people might have said some some nasty things when the, when the press. Oh, I put a post on Instagram that I'd started an OnlyFans in, ah, my, in my stories, which mm-hmm. I don't really use Instagram that much. So. And I don't like the platform that much, so I just, I mean, I don't want to sound well, like Well, what, what have you been right? going through in the last few years that you alluded to? Well, we almost lost our house. Um, I'm, for years, since Sopranos, I kind of just take jobs that are going to support me taking care of my kids. I'm a single mom. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't, I turned a lot of things down, and I was never chasing this Hollywood dream. I already lived it. Sopranos was enough. I felt it. I tasted it. It was amazing. Topping that, I, I didn't really need, I didn't feel the need to do it. I just wanted to have a family and, you know, have a decent life. I mean, it definitely brought some perks, like a nice seat in a restaurant when it's crowded. It's always cool, <laughs> you know. But, but um, I would say the last three years, it's like once you see the truth about a lot of stuff, you just can't fucking unsee it. Ever in, again. in Hollywood. In everything. I mean, if I, I think uh, you guys have this uh, this video that that we worked on back in 2010. Um, it was during the Bush administration. We made a whole. Um, well, my ex did a whole album on the New World Order taking over back then during the Bush administration. That Shooter Jennings? Yeah, that was it's called Shooter's Black album. Ribbons. The album's, it's, the it's album's phenomenal. phenomenal. I mean, it kind of yeah. came and went. It's called Black Ribbons. Um, Stephen King narrates it. And I can't believe I'm sitting here promoting um, Shooter's album, but I will because I believe in it so much. And what I found interesting about it now, looking, I, I posted that during the pandemic when we were in the lockdown because we were all just so scared. It was all so new. Everything, you know, no one knew what to believe, but um, it was taken down. And I called Shooter. I go, yo, why'd they take it down? Your Universal doesn't own it anymore. What is it? And they were taking it down because it was being censored over the subject matter. And I was, Stephen King narrates the album. It's a whole concept album about you know, you know all the things back in those days. It would have you would have been talking about Bohemian Grove or the Illuminati or the Bilderbergs, like all the conspiracies and all that sort of stuff. And um, if Stephen King would apply, if if we brought him that album now with this this government in place, this administration, and said it's the same album. It's the same subject matter. It doesn't matter if it's red or blue. This is this is universal at this point. This is this is an attack on humanity. This is an attack on. This isn't red versus blue having a fight. But I think the the people don't know that. I mean, everybody's so hung up on on being divided and and fighting some good fight because everybody. So people are so confused and so hypnotized. I feel like. I mean, there was this awesome book. I don't remember a lot of it because I read it a while ago, but I think it was the history of totalitarianism. Um, but, or the psychology of it. It was the psychology of it and how you just get all of these, you, just, you know, it's fear. All this fear. I mean, look at what happened in 9-11. Nobody really wanted to pay attention to what was really happening. And then we end up in, 
you know, got all of the other crazy things, another war. And then what happened this time? It was just sort of like a, a replay that got away with it once. I mean, I always have Bob O'Reilly going through my head, you Won't know. Won't get fooled again. You know, but it's like, but we're keep, we keep getting fooled. And now what you were saying about how did we manage to take over like this, you know, it's not Hearst printing newspapers. Now it's the Internet, yeah. which is magic. It's magic. And at the same time, it's death. You know, it's 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 amazing. The progress is amazing. And then it destroys everything in its wake, you know. Yeah. For me, I it it basically comes down to this. You convince the populace that the other side is totalitarian and maniacal and a, a tyrannical dictator and Hitlerian. You know what I mean? And then so once you can convince enough people of the sort of Hitlerian theme, then you would say to your average citizen who was living in France in 1942, uh, there is a guy named Hitler and he's trying to exterminate a bunch of Jews and, and us. And um, would you like to join the underground? Now, if you do, you're going to have to lie a lot. And you're going to have to do basically anything. And you're going to have to do things you're probably not comfortable with and have never engaged in in the past. But to defeat Hitler, count me in. Um, so I wouldn't forge documents for myself. But if it was to aid the French underground, then I think nobody would have a problem with forged documents and, and engaging in a bunch of behavior that you wouldn't do. So once you can establish that the other side wants to end democracy, then whether you're Twitter or you're Big Tech or you're the New York Times or the LA Times, then you can essentially engage in whatever behavior you need to engage in to defeat Hitler 2.0. And if you got to use a pandemic to win an election, then you shall. And if you have to take things off the big tech that even they know is true, if they have to pull stuff down or it's the Hunter Biden's laptop or whatever, whatever it is, if you have to get a document signed off by 51 former intelligence experts to say that it's Russian collusion, then you would just like you would if there was a document for you to sign in 1942 in France trying to take Hitler down. So the the way the game works is you first paint the other side is Hitlerian. Once you've established that framework, then you can engage in any behavior you would like that would benefit that person not being reelected. And so, the, and you can attack anybody who you may suspect would not be on your side, even if it wasn't a direct policy issue. So you wear a mask, we know how you vote, I wear my sunglasses on top of my trucker cap and drive a Ram truck. Okay, we know how I vote <laughs> because otherwise they wouldn't go. Ab so now you go, you're uh, governor of California and you go, well, leave the head shops and the bars open and shut the churches. Because if you hang out at a head shop, we know how you vote. And if you hang out at a church, we know how you vote. And that's basically what just happened to all of us. But what's fucked up is my crew that I grew up with, we were hanging out at the head shops. Yeah, well, that... You know what I mean? That, that I think about my, my dear departed mom, who was as progressive, hippie, and 70s blue as you could find. And I don't know who she hated more. I, like, I don't know if she hated Big Pharma more, or the FBI more, or the CIA more, or the current administration more. I don't know who she trusted less. And now we have forced those people to all support Big Pharma, yeah. FBI, CIA, current administration, and wars abroad. We've, we've, yeah. it's, 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 the, it's, it's the dumbest yes, thing reversed. ever. And they don't realize how malleable they are. Like all we did is get you to do the exact opposite of everything that's on, on, when you take a pledge to be progressive, that's on the first page. FBI, don't trust them. CIA, 
don't trust them. If you would have told my mom 51 former CIA and FBI intelligence experts signed a document, she would have rolled a joint in that document <laughs> and laughed. <laughs> now we have her descendants, the children of that person, all arguing on behalf of the document in the CIA. That's what happened. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely bizarre. I, mean, I have friends that listen, you know, I was promoting some some comedian who I think is is awesome and funny. This guy, Tyler Fish, Fisher, Tyler, I don't know what his full name, Tyler Fisher, maybe, or Tyler Fish. And I'm telling my friends about him. And one of my girlfriends got so fucking offended because he was making fun of everything that's happening. She goes, you're not cool anymore. You're not <laughs> this anymore. You're not. I was like, first of all, I've had abortions. Second of all, I used to be gay. Like, I don't, I am not, if they're trying to paint me out to be this right wing lunatic all of a sudden, and I'm like, no, I'm the liberal here with, you know, with someone who actually does research. You have the internet, use it. Don't just follow what's on the top 10 hits that you find on, on a subject. She's like, where are you reading your news? And I'm like, I search for shit because I want to know the truth. I care about the truth. People, I'm so sick of everybody lying about everything. And don't you want to know what's going on? Well, it's the group that preaches tolerance that is intolerant. I, I and know. also, but there's also a, a sort of human component missing, which is, uh, was funny. I was, uh, Tucker was out here, I don't know, four or five years ago or something. And then um, I did a show and then, he, I, he was going to be in town for a couple of days. And so I just said to him, uh, if you're around uh, and in town, uh, maybe we can grab dinner on a Friday night. And he said, yeah. And uh, so he went out to dinner. Imagine going out to dinner in Hollywood with uh, Tucker Carlson. And then I said, I'm doing a set at the comedy store. You should come with me after dinner and just hang out. Yeah. I wish I could have seen all that. <laughs> and he's you gotta be my buddy Mark Marin. Yeah, he's literally <laughs> wearing like a fishing hat and sunglasses like into the back of the, oh my God. the comedy store. But he hung out and made it through unscathed. And uh, that was a Saturday night. And then uh, Sunday, I walked into my fellas where we watch football, NFL Sundays. All the guys gather, we eat, we have beers, and we watch a game. And then I walked in on uh, Sunday, and like somebody said, uh, what did you do that last night? I said, well, I went out to dinner with Tucker Carlson. And one of my guys who watch your football goes, oh, bad guy, bad guy. Oh, He's a mad. bad guy. And I'm like, okay, why would I go out to dinner with a bad guy? <laughs> I'm not a bad guy, right? Uh, but you know he's a bad guy, except for I'm the one who knows him, and he's not a bad guy. Uh, but that's that's the way it works. They have, and here's what I'm saying, everybody. You can say what you want about Tucker Carlson or Ben Shapiro or Candace Owens or Dennis Prager or many other conservative voices that you disagree with. That's fine. You disagree with them. Um, you can't say they're dumb and you can't say they're bad because there's no proof of that. M most all of them are dedicated husbands and wives. Like first things first, just from Jump Street. Like if you want to know sort of how a person is on a cellular level, like speak to their kids or their adult kids. You know, th they had a front row seat to whether daddy's a bad guy or mommy's a bad woman. Like they, they're there. All day, 24-7. You know, they all have great relationships with their kids. They all love their kids. And they're mostly in very long-term, monogamous, dedicated relationships. So just based on that, like how, you know, bad dude, evil dude, you know what I mean? Is, you know, some sort of a peddler of lies, merchant of fear. Like, yeah, except for they have adult daughters that they're arranging weddings for, and they've been married to the same woman for 27 years. Like, just just on a family, familial basis, how, how bad a dude? Because bad dudes are like, yeah, he's on his fifth wife, and he gambled the mortgage money away, and he's been stepping out, and he likes to drink a little bit, you know, and he hasn't... He doesn't know two of his sons. Like, yeah. that's, that's what bad dudes do. So, they don't do any of that. So, just just a baseline of how bad can you be. Then the second strata is, is how do they treat people? How do they, how, how's the turnover at their work? 
Is there women who show up, work four months, and then leave because they can't take the environment, the misogynistic environment? Or do they work with the same people for decades and decades and decades? <coughs> they all work with the same people. They'll, and by the way, majority are probably women, probably employ, work with, produce, you know, segments and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then what are they like on air versus off air? What is the difference? Because most people don't get the opportunity to sit at a restaurant with these people and have long engaging conversations. Uh, no difference off the air than on the air. So first things first, everyone, look into their policies and disagree with whatever policies you, you wanna disagree with, although I think you would, you would disagree with much fewer than you think you do I mean, if you looked into it, but are. calling them sort of cartoon monsters, yeah. it's, it's super lazy. It's disingenuous, but it also makes you lazy. Like, go look uh, into these people a the little la- bit. The laziness is what freaks me out the most, especially coming from what I consider to be my tribe. These were the, these were the, you know, these were the rebels. And, and now I, you listen to a few punk rockers and a few musicians will come out and say, you can't be a liberal and call yourself a renegade anymore. You have to be a conservative in order to, to be someone who fights for freedom, to, to, to emulate what the old hippie movement is. But obviously we know there was a lot of issues with the old hippie movement and there were a lot of psyop sort of things involved in all of that. But at the same time, I think that, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying. I'll stop. Uh, I'll st- I won't go too yeah, far. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad when people you respect and people that did sort of forge their own path it's money. It's following. I mean, look at what happened with Rogan and Neil Young. Neil Young was one of my heroes growing up. I cannot tell you how fucking fast I stopped listening. I have prints of Neil Young. Beautiful. Ama- I want to get rid of them all. I'm so disappointed. In, and I, in every concert that he would have, he'd have a giant microphone pr- talking about propaganda, all of these things, his whole political vibe. And now you want to crush this man for talking? You know, maybe it was, you know, I don't know, where who, Malone and all that stuff i've heard you know several different takes on who that man is at this point but at that time he was just you know gathering more information i feel like joe rogan has great guests like how do you position yourself my music or or your show who the fuck do you think you are old man like you know old man take a look at my motherfucking life now (laughs) i swear to god i was so mad and he's canadian and these truckers are have a convoy lined up and and you're not fighting for the average man right now yeah. you're fighting for big pharma what because of blackrock and blackstone or whoever the fuck bought your music catalog i don't understand it is it's crazy well it's not only crazy but it's like it's kind of it's it's upside down world in that if you people, Neil Youngs and, and many comedians, many comedians, a very disappointing group as well, actors, creatives. Most comedians have at least been like, I can be funny. Funny's funny. Here's what I think we're, we're dealing with in this city, in this state, but eh, the, bigger, the bigger picture of what, what happened. Um, you know, SAG has, I don't know how many thousands of thousands of members, but there's only about 10% of them who work, right? It's, like a, it's a small percentage of people in the union who actually are employed anything close to gainfully. And then an even smaller percentage that really would be on the like sort of upper strata, people you've heard of, sure. people you've seen. Um, there's really nobody in this town that's not replaceable. There just isn't. There's, there's, a, there's really a, a handful of sort of independent folks that are just so talented that you just can't really take them down. You know, like you can try to take down Louis C.K., but Louis C.K. is a very talented stand-up, and he'll just go out, and he'll do shows, and he'll make money, and he'll have an audience. And there's, there's a handful of those people. But I... You know, that's almost a single digit situation versus the thousands and the tens of thousands who are totally tradable and cuttable at any point. If this was a team, you'd be every every year you can be cut. Yeah, all in role players. Hundred yeah. percent. So with with that in mind, 
Now, what's it come down to? I mean, you don't want to get cut, and you've got your marching orders, although they've never been stated. It's just understood. You know what I mean? It's understood that the boss is a vegan. You want to show up with a ham sandwich, or do you kind of get what we're doing here? (laughs) And it doesn't need to be posted in the bathroom. It, It does not need to be laminated or posted. The boss is a vegan, and the chick in charge of hiring and firing here is also a vegan. Do you want to show up with your pot roast? You got to play the Fuck game. Yes, I do. I want to show do. up with my fucking ham in my hands. <laughs> yes. Did you want to do that quiet. when you were 26? No. And I was quiet. That's I was my petrified. point. I was petrified. Everybody's man. petrified. So. Are these people vegans themselves? Are they vegetarian? Do they have thoughts about it? I don't know. All they know is you show up with a ham sandwich, you may get clipped. So not only, and then people started figuring it out. So they're like, this is what Hollywood does. So what Hollywood does is they go, so no ham sandwich is is good, right? Yeah, show up with like a tofu salad. Oh, okay. What would be better? Well, don't show up with a ham sandwich. Yeah, I know. That's not not to do. But what if I had a shirt that said, Meat is Murder, signed by Pam Anderson? Oh, that would be even better. Oh, okay. Then put the fucking shirt on and go walk in front of the boss's office with your Meat is Murder shirt. And they go, oh, okay. Yeah. And then the next person who works at this factory goes, where'd you get the shirt? Because the boss complimented it. It's like, I'm going to get one, too. Next thing you know, we have Hollywood. That's where COVID comes down. That's where Black Lives Matter has come down. That's where every story, whatever the situation, yeah. that's how they all get in lockstep on the same page because they, they're, they're, they do not need to work. They understand it, and they don't want to get clipped. And so there is no diversity in thought because it's not their thoughts to begin with. But do they? Do you think they genuinely think that? Because in this analogy, they wouldn't really think that you know meat is murder or anything like that. But are these Hollywood? Are the Hollywood elite genuinely feeling this way? Some of the people at the factory are legitimately vegetarians, but it's a very small group. Yeah, I don't think the elites. I think the elites know what's up. The I don't others, think any of them are fucking vaccinated either. The, the others just want to get along, <laughs> right? I, I and so that's that's what you get. Now, there's a handful of people at the factory that go, well, fuck this. I'm bringing a ham sandwich in. Uh, But those are the people that are good. Because if you're not good, leave the fucking sandwich at home. That's how it works. And so what you did see is a handful of people that were actually good who went, I'm going over to Substack. I'm doing my own thing. Fuck you, New York Times. I'm not following. You know, I'm not dancing to the tune of the retarded piper. I'm going to fucking do my own thing. And they, (laughs) they left. And that's what you're seeing now. You're seeing, but it's only people who are good. Everyone else is in the middle. They need their job. They got a mortgage. Uh, that's me, though. You well, know, I, you know I, I turned down a lot of jobs through my time. Um, my I, uh, two moms, you said Nicaraguan, that Nicaraguan movie thing. She was Nicaraguan. And we took care of her through the, the pandemic, and she died. And during that time, while she was dying um, in my arms, I was being offered parts. And it was coming straight out of the lockdown and I couldn't take the parts because she was dying and they they you know these these assholes are like well how long is it going to take for your mother to die oh my god that's your mom she was uh my nanny she raised me this woman who raised me oh it's her Olga yeah, I, I, took care- say, oh, I have a Nicaraguan. Yeah. yeah, you do. Now Guatemala. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's just you know Nicaraguan. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, but she was my monkey, and I took care of her. She was my nanny growing up, and then she was my kid's nanny, and we took care of her until she died in my house. So when they, I turned down these jobs, which would have sustained me for the next few years, I only take jobs when I can, and they sustain me for a few years, and then I take another job because I want to be with my kids. I'm with my kids 24-7 because I was raised by a nanny, so I just didn't want to repeat that, you know? Um, where the hell was I going How old are your this? kids? 15 and 12. Yeah. You know? Well, all right, so here's, my, here's how it works, as best I can tell. And just to circle back, um, I did interview Tucker Carlson a couple weeks ago. And he said, look, 
when I was 31 and kind of getting started and had a couple of young kids and was only married for a few years, I would have sucked it up too and just done what the man said to do. That's what they rely on. What they rely on is, is you don't want to get fired from your cushy job, do you? So then suck it up and echo our talking points. And that's, yeah. so it's, it's fear, sort of fear economics. It's like economics versus fear, both. People are, people are scared of being shit can, which is the same people that never stop talking about McCarthyism are the same people that are, will just fire everybody who disagrees with them immediately. I don't know, do you have, Dawson, you have a Gavin Newsom Oh, boy. Sitting down with the Chuck Todd. Yeah, we have it. My boyfriend's out there. He goes, I really want to listen to the Gavin Newsom episode. I'm like, <laughs> me too. Let's listen to the Joker talk. He is. <laughs> he sat down with the Chuck Ooh. Todd. And I guess we ask him about what they did wrong with COVID. Is this the I did everything wrong? Clip? He's like, let's do it all over again next month. Oh, uh, yeah. Grab your headphones, by the way. Dre. All right. Let's hear. Let's hear what he got right about COVID. Well, what is something you do differently? Well, I think a whole, no, no. we would have done everything differently because we understood, we would understand outdoors as an example. All right. Clap. Age. So he would do everything differently. <laughs> uh, give it, should have a little more of a head on it. Let's see. He'll, he'll go deeper in it. We'll go a little further back. Well, what is local, something you do differently? Well, I think a whole, no, no. we would have done everything differently because we understood, okay. we would understand outdoors. Okay. Listen, he would have done everything differently. Why do we listen to him then? Okay, so the, first off, he would have done everything differently. I did everything the opposite of what he so said. He, would, he basically said, I would do what Adam Carolla did. <laughs> yes, I'm 100% right on COVID because all I did was the opposite of everything that came out of this fucking maniacal liar's I'd mouth. I'd like to see him and Trudeau have a fucking OnlyFans page when their whole shit oh. fucking explodes <laughs> if, together. If, if, if Gavin Newsom got together with Trudeau for some gay sex... There would be an issue because that Gavin would be like, I'm a bottom. And Trudeau would be like, well, I'm <laughs> a bottom too, yeah. too. And they'd be like, well, we can't both. Can we just mush our butts can't together? Can't we just peg ourselves then? Like, uh, no, no, can we're we, both bottoms. All imagine right. a conversation between these two? Yeah, let's Forget do about rock, it. paper, liar to see uh, which <laughs> one gets to be the top. Jesus Christ. But the real, so then the question is, is, all right, so he would do everything differently as it pertains so to COVID. So weird how nonchalantly means- he says that, too. I mean, that's a pretty big... But listen to the things Trudeau says. I mean, they came from the same fucking school. They were taught by fucking Schwab. Those are their, his babies. Yeah, but if, you're, if, if Chuck Todd asks you, like, oh, I'll do a couple things differently. Like, yeah, like, and then just, just name off some specific things. But everything differently. Everything. We yeah. do everything. Right, and I then mean, and then the lying, and then basically. By the way, when did this become an excuse? Like you go, "Hey, uh, you're the head coach of the Rams, and you guys are uh, three and uh, 14. <laughs> yeah, well, there are other coaches that suck too. <laughs> L- look at the look at the Jaguars. That guy's four and thirteen. Yeah, see what Mike so Tomlin did. He's fucking, there's there's a lot of other retarded, stupid fucking people that are running their states into the ground. What about them? Like, okay, there are other people that are horrible at their job. That's awesome. So you get pulled over for drunk driving, and uh, they start they start writing you up, and you go, what about other people who have driven drunk? Like, okay. I mean, what That's about... not really an excuse. Newsom, when, speaking of drunk driving, the, in the midst of all of this gun law mania, he lets off Pelosi's husband for drunk driving. He gets him off the hook. I'm sorry, he's operating a fucking a, a machine that could kill a bazillion people. Why does he get off? Oh, um, like distant relatives, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah, that. Like her, I know. Fuck that. <laughs> it's not perfect. fair. That's not justice. Let's go. Yeah, well, don't. I think you may be expecting. Like, like well, here's here's what I'm saying. The part where the police chief's son gets let off easy on the DUI thing that's baked in. Like, I get it. That that I understand. And the part where these guys sort of one hand washes the other and it's yeah. all that. That's, that's politics. That's business. That's life. That's humanity. I get it. Um, when I grew up out here and we had the Hillside Strangler was on the loose. And there, there was always a couple of serial killers that were around. But like the Hillside Strangler was, was on the loose. And I don't know what year it was. I was young. 
and maybe it was another killer. I think it was the Hillside Strangler. And 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 he was like, geez, coming into people's homes in the middle of the night and killing them, you know? And I, I could remember like sleeping over at my grandparents' house. Uh, they just had a one bedroom, but so I would sleep on the sofa in the in the den, uh, in the in the living room. And I just remember like lying there in bed, like kind of keeping one eye Can open. That hillside strangler's coming for me, and he's loose. He's in the San Fernando Valley. It's in Hollywood. Vulnerable, and yeah. I'm vulnerable, and I got these two elderly people. Not, not, not showed a lot of tendencies toward protecting me, so I can't even get a fucking meal out of these two. But yeah, hillside strangler. We had the 70, 44 caliber killer. I think. Yeah, yeah, 70, 77. So I'm this counts 12, as a near death experience. For I'm you, 13 years old, and I'm just laying there, and and because I don't have context, because I don't have context. So now you take a 13, you know, take my daughter, she's 13 years old. She has no context. She just hears the from the view, never stop yammering about death and destruction. And then all the talking heads on CNN who are wrong, just just fear porning away. And she thinks the hillside stranglers outside of her neighborhood because that's context. So what are they supposed to do? So you traumatized a bunch of people. Nice work, ladies from The View and CNN, who oh, love, you know, love the children. I was they very, the my, my mom was like this with Joy for many years. We were all Behar. really close. She was always at my house. Um, and I was always on the show. And I, I cannot believe what I listen to now. And it, it breaks my heart because I love her. And I know, like, if she really knew, I feel like if a lot of people really knew what the fuck was really going on behind the scenes, they would have a different view on it. But at the same time, they're not allowed to talk about it anyhow. But I agree with you. I don't know what the fuck it's is a, going on. It's a on. fear. Here's what it's a fear of. It's a fear of them being wrong, them being wrong for an extended period of time, them listening to people and sometimes idolizing people. I don't know. Cuomo, Don Lemon. uh, you know, Gretchen Whitmer, he people you me. voted for, people you supported. You supported these people. They were wrong. You were wrong for supporting them. You were wrong for listening to all the talking heads on MSNBC and CNN. You were wrong. So person who was wrong for three years, what else you've been wrong about? Because we they can't, see we it, can't just examine this part. We're going to have to look into everything <laughs> you thought for the last 20 years. And nobody wants to... Delve but no, into that. Nobody wants a revolution here. Nobody wants to to rebel. I don't, I th and you know what everyone says to me? I'm not going to be able to make a difference. Just me can't make a difference. And I'm like, but what if we all are standing together? Yes. You know, what? Ha I mean, there are 300 of them. There's the entire world being taken over by all these ideals and ideologies and all this bullshit. I mean, my daughter, when we're talking about the kids... Um, I didn't know who a lot of these people are. I don't know who the people in politics are. I don't really know about a lot of this stuff. But my daughter, early on during the whole BLM thing, somebody was sending me um, Candace Owens stuff. And everyone on my block, he was sending it on a thread. This my, One of my neighbors was sending it on a thread to everybody on my block. And I have never seen more people rally up to attack another human being in my life. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you're all the Laurel Canyon hippies. What the grenade. fuck are you doing? Yes. But I was curious. So my daughter and I sat down. I didn't know who Candace Owens was. Never heard of, heard of her in my life. And we watched this... Um, we watched this thing of her talking about her take on BLM. And when you mentioned Don Lemon, he was freaking me out. He was freaking me out during that whole time because my kids, first of all, never really had many white friends. My daughter, you know, they're all, you know, either Spanish, black, anything like all over the place, different, different um, from different backgrounds. So my little daughter is like hearing that she's now a racist just because she's right. she existing in the woman. world. <laughs> And I'm like, well, she didn't even well, she didn't even know she liked Candace Owens yet. And then later on, I would notice she was watching her um, more and more because we don't really watch TV in the house. What the fuck is the point? You know what I mean? So she's watching all this stuff. She's watching the Daily Wire stuff. And I'm like, wow. So where am I taking this kid? There's no concerts. Like she's not into music at the moment. She's a pian she's a pianist. And she's an amazing, amazing musician and artist. But um, I texted Tucker <laughs> and I go, yo. This thing that you're speaking at, can you get me into this thing so I can bring my daughter, take a road trip down to Arizona? I didn't know what it was. It was so he puts me in touch with Charlie Kirk mm -hmm. to get to get, and I'm taking my 15 at the time, no, 14 year old daughter to Turning Point USA. 
Mm-hmm. No idea where we're going, what we're doing, <laughs> what it's about. Who and I, people are telling me you can't be seen there. It's going to ruin our brand because I have you know I have a wine company stuff, Gangster Goddess, um, with my partner Chris. So she's like, you know, you can't. What are you doing? You can't go to this thing. And I'm yes. like, yes, I can. I said they're talking about about truth. Like this is not. My daughter is interested in this. Like I, it's and when my friends here, you fucking listen to Candace, and I'm like, it's not me. It's my daughter. The minute you say. It's your child. Your child is interested in this because she's interested in all sides. She's interested in making her own decisions, her own evaluations with all the information she has. They can't come at you because she's the future. She's a child and she's curious. So to hear people go at me and it's always, oh, that bitch. And I'm like, no, listen to what this bitch has to say. She is not, she doesn't want to be victimized. She doesn't want to be a pawn. She doesn't want to be, you know, oh God, there was an amazing, I have to say that Turning Point USA thing, it was amazing. Yeah. I cried the whole fucking time I was there at everybody's speech. It was, it, it, you really felt like you were at the, at the precipice of possible, like real change, but you could see what a battle it was going to be. Yeah, you know. and you see why the powers that be fight so hard against those types of organizations, and they always label them racist. Or well, the thing, the, the two things, whatever, the two places funny. you lose the liberals with them is <clears throat> abortion, which I understand. You know, the conservatives are going to go full force on abortion, and I understand that argument. My my great grandmother was was the only abortionist in in the fifties in in Harlem, and you mentioned Hearst. He gave, she gave Marion Davies her abortion. Wow. And her center there. Wow. So she wa- she had dirt on everybody across across the entire state of America. You know, people from the mafia to Washington, all over the place, Hollywood. So, wow. you know, I understand she, and it wasn't like she was, you know, fully for abortion. She would have people bring women in there that were seven months pregnant and say, you better get rid of this baby. And she's like, that's murder. Are you crazy? Like, absolutely not. Um, But these kids were using hangers and, you know, all kinds of shit. So in her, in her mind, she's, you know, doing the right thing, saving people's lives instead of, yeah, you know, it's so controversial. I, I, I have know. a little scar on my scalp from my mom trying to use that hair. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I, I'm, t- I'm not kidding. If you shave my head, That's you would see is. a little hanger shaped. <laughs> oh it's not God. shaped like a hanger, but <laughs> obviously caused <laughs> by a hanger. <laughs> I'm Jeez. I'm almost sure of it, but but man, I mean that's where we aligned ourselves, and and we consider ourselves to be. My, my daughter will always say you're economically conservative and you're socially liberal, mom. Yeah, that's your thing. Like my daughter's got the de- well, she understands it all better than I do. They can't deal with nuance at all because when when you start dealing with nuance, then the cartoon monster character becomes a human being. Yeah, nuance is what makes human beings human beings. Uh, when you watch Marvel movies, not a lot of nuance in the villains. They're bad. They're bad all day, every day. That's that's a cartoon Disney villain version. You don't see a nuance side to that. And so nuance makes you a human. They don't want to look at you as a cartoon character. So that's why you get no nuance. And all the talk in the world where you go, what do you mean? I'm an atheist and I'm for abortion. I'm a, I, I, I think they should legalize and decriminalize marijuana. That doesn't buy you anything. That's all nuance shit. They'll pick the one thing that makes you a cartoon, evil cartoon character, and they'll go for it. I will say, last thing, I tell you, uh, tells. You can find a picture, Dawson, of Chuck Todd interviewing Gavin Newsom. There's a two shot with both of them in there. I look for tell. So someone's wearing a mask. You know how they vote. You're wearing your Bass Pro fishing hat with your sunglasses upside down on top with your... (laughs) With your Oakley Rays upside my boy, down? My boyfriend out in the hall. Okay, we know how you vote. <laughs> yeah, You vote a different direction. I don't need to... If you just showed me people walking down the sidewalk, one guy's got the Bass Pro Fisher with the sunglasses, the other guy's wearing the mask, I, I'm going to be 100% on how they vote. I now come up with another tell. You wear the mask, if you're a dude, you wear the mask and you cross your legs on top of each other where you're like trying to crush your own nutsack, I know how you vote. You sit... I, I cross my legs like I got three 
sets of knots. <laughs> like I, I got the ankle you on top of the kneecap. It yeah. shoots out at 90 degrees. I'm giving the sack as much room as humanly possible. When you see dudes that are progressive, they cross their legs like chicks. And I don't know if they know it, but it's a signal. It's 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 like a it's a signal saying we're simpatico. I agree with you. We're on on the same side. Like Chuck Todd sits with his legs crossed so fucking far. I don't know where his nuts and cock are. Like they're being <laughs> they're being choked out in the octagon. Oh and Gavin Newsom's got it as well. It's it's a it's a sign. So you see the mask and the leg cross. There's just, I, I don't even see the mask in the hat anymore. Show me the two leg crosses. I'll show you. How the guy votes. Yeah. How, I want to know why none of the Democrats and liberals like Kennedy. Oh, because he he poses a threat because he's saying things that they don't they don't they like. don't even understand it. They don't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He's he's talking about stuff they don't want to hear, and and they know he kind of brings his receipts, and he's got he's got the pedigree. He's not just some you know. It's not Vivek Ramaswamy. It just showed up. Yeah, exactly. He goes way back to Marilyn Monroe. He brings his receipts. He knows how to talk, and they can't stand it. So that's why he's um, he's a racist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's one hundred percent. He's an anti semite. He's right. a total anti semite. <laughs> uh, go to the OnlyFans. Uh, Dre Di Matteo. Uh, this has been a uh, a wonderful conversation. I hope you can come back and preach more. Um, don't forget my wine. What That's this? the real reason we're here. Oh, I'm sorry. Gangster, Gangster goddess, goddess wine, guys. It's at knockingpointwines.com. <sighs> yes. Got a new South Blanc. Oh, man. Yeah, South Blanc. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take a break, come back, do some news right after this. NordVPN, I travel a lot. I just got back from Hawaii, and I'm heading to Vegas right after this. Unsecure airport and other public Wi-Fi's. Oh, well, that's a hacker's dream. And that's why you need NordVPN to protect your data like I do. And if I'm outside the U.S., like I go to Goodwood for the car race or something like that, I still have access to all U.S. streaming services, so I never miss my shows. I can change my remote location with one click. NordVPN, it's the fastest VPN in the world. I don't sacrifice internet speed for better security, and you shouldn't either. And you can have NordVPN on up to six devices. Get exclusive NordVPN deals at nordvpn.com slash Adam Carolla. Risk-free. Try it out for 30 days. Money-back guarantee. Nothing to worry about because they have a money-back guarantee if you don't love it. nordvpn.com slash Adam Carolla. Well, you probably heard me talk about microdosing. All sorts of people are microdosing daily, feel healthier, and to perform better. Our show today is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC, help you feel just the right amount of good in your mood. Not overwhelming, just slow and steady. It really changed the way you feel. I love this stuff. Um, it just it kind of takes the edge off without uh, making you feel wobbly. Microdose is available nationwide. And to learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com. Use the code ADAM to get free shipping and 30% off of your first order. Links can be found in the show's description. But again, that's microdose.com. Use the code ADAM. I think... You're going to enjoy it as much as I do. Microdose.com. Code Adam. In the spirit of Murrow, Jennings, Cronkite, here's another great moment in local news. The first anti-rat day of action was held in Harlem. We've had rats the size of Crocs. Just running up and down the street like a croc shoe, an average size eight, running up and down the street. That's a great moment in local news. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right. Well, I love that clip. <laughs> I, I like that she clarified herself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crocs. You People thought, oh, rats the size of crocodiles. Right. <laughs> and by the way, the people that use hyperbole all the time do themselves no favors. 
No favors. <laughs> they do that stuff all the time. They yeah. go, oh, you got this. Uh, yeah, the fucking squirrel shit on my brand new car, right? It was like a dinosaur took a dump on it. It's like, stop it. Because yeah. I, I don't really believe you now. And and there's an emotional hyperbole too. Dr. Drew would do it all the time. You know, I'm walking through the airport and this woman comes up, starts screaming at me, screams at me. And it's like, she's not screaming at you. She had something to say. <laughs> like, don't make me do that math with, with you. Right. Yeah. Be, be down a little. Be It'll a- help. Be accurate. All right. Speaking of these rats, did you uh-huh. know that New York has a rat czar? Oh yeah, yeah. That's they, so they had a big rat anti rat day, and that's what that clip is from. Look, I'm confused by who gets a uniform and who doesn't get a uniform. You know what I mean? Like the Surgeon General, he dresses like the Admiral of like a you know the, the Spanish Navy from you know right. 1902. You know, like I like that. And then some are are with comical effect, like you have Admiral Levine, who's whatever, the he, she, whatever, who's dressed like the head of the Salvation Army. Right. It's it's comical. But we either have outfits or we don't. And I'm saying, if you're going to be the rat czar, I want an outfit. Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese mascot, something. Oh, as a rat. As an actual rat. Well, listen. I was thinking like an exterminator of some sort. Something. Okay. Or a giant cat. You know what I mean? Or something. I want an outfit. I don't want you in Dockers in a, in a polo shirt. I want I an outfit. I less than that. I, yeah, she I just want, looks like a, a hipster. I want a you in an outfit. And by the way, I want a czar for everything. And the reason I want a czar, I mean, okay. Here's why. Like, the fact that we live in L.A. with the worst traffic on the planet, there's no traffic czar, but, like, Idaho has a traffic czar. Orange County has one. Orange County has is insane to me. Like, I want a czar, and then once we appoint a czar, we get to ask that person questions. Like, you've been the fucking traffic czar for six years, and nothing's gotten better. Right. You're the homeless czar, or you're the rat czar. Once you get a czar... You should be a czar czar for We have too many czars for a country who totally fucking hates Russia. And let's look at the meaning of what a czar is. If we have a traffic czar, he will have the ultimate fucking right to tell certain cars get the fuck off the road. I'm the czar. You're right. Wow. Czargate. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize I've been saying it. I never even much. thought about that. We say that. Nazi. We, we hate Nazis, but we love czars. What's we going love on? czars. Yeah, Stalin killed more people than Hitler did. So what are we really talking about here? <laughs> well, Stalin actually killed the czars. <laughs> well, wait a minute. And, uh, yeah, the czar is pre-communist Russia. Oh, so he... They killed. were still All awful right, people. Stalin's Ivan the Terrible was a czar. When was the last Russian czar? Uh, right, World War I. Mm-hmm. So nothing past that. Dawson's a czar czar. I know. You're a czar czar, yeah. Gabor. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, have another name for czar, but command, put someone in charge. Although, I think we're done because remember two and a half years ago when Kamala Harris was appointed the border czar, mm-hmm. but she's never she's been never to the went. border? Yeah. That, I am... Remote czar. I am so... I'll just use the word intrigued. Like, in my world, it'd be like if I was OJ's publicist, you know, and and we got OJ a job during, doing color commentary for, like, a college football team. You know what I mean? And OJ was, like, finally got back up into the booth, and he's calling the... Uh, he's doing know, the radio show for Glastonbury State. He's doing the radio show. And his he he keeps referring to, like, we go, oh, that quarterback got sacked. He took his head off. <laughs> he took his head off. <laughs> like, if he about the fifth time he said it, like, during the commercial break, I would be his publicist. I'd be like, just... Just say he sacked him, yeah. or say he jacked him up, or he blew him up. But he left a lot of evidence on that right. field. You, you keep saying took his head off, and you make everyone think. I'm going to be tuning back, and I'm going to be seeing a decapitated. Stop <laughs> saying that. Just stop it. And so, with Kamala Harris, I'd be like, "Look, you're the border czar. Yeah, uh, we need you to go to the border." And then she'd go, "It's a shit show." And I'd go, "Yeah." We'll just fly in on Air Force Two. You'll go to a part that's not a shit show. Quick we'll take up. a couple of pictures. 
literally at noon. You can back, back back on the plane. AOC two, did it yesterday. Two, it was great. You, you do it two thirty. You'll be back on Air Force Two, and that'll be that. And then everyone will keep going. They won't say, "Well, you're the border star. You've never been to the border." It's like you have to do this. Like, there's not. I mean, here's I guess my question: Is it just a kind of a hole in their game? Or is it a, just a giant middle finger to everyone in America? It's just like, fuck you. I just do what I want. You, you know what I mean? Like, are they just going fuck off? Like, why wouldn't you just go? OJ, stop saying cut his head off. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kamala, you got to go to the border. We'll find a nice area where there's no illegals. Or we'll take a couple of shots. You'll meet with the mayor of whatever, Brownsville or something. Then you get right back on the plane. Yeah, it's an afternoon. <laughs> why not? What? It's weird. It's it, it, it shows a contempt for the populace. Is, for the is, populace, is 100%. Is what and it's uh, supported and buoyed by the media. All right. Now, I have a question then on a totally different subject. There's a problem going on with desserts. And I want to know Thank what you. you guys think about this. It's a trend. Okay. It's a trend. If you go to a... A nice restaurant, not a not highfalutin, just a, a good a good place to eat. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the lower down on the totem pole, like you know, if you go to TGI Fridays or you go to w- one of these, you know, Pasta Village or whatever the fuck, you know, all of them, sure, whatever you go to all those, you order a slice of cake or a slice of pie for dessert, it will be big. Oh yeah, and in the shape. Of a piece of cake or piece of pie. You go to a highfalutin hoity toity place and you order the chocolate, whatever, or and or what happened to me in Hawaii, the pineapple upside down cake, which I love the most, you get a ball of pineapple upside down cake. A ball. It's 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 round at the top. It looks it looks like it was made like an ice cream scoop. It looks like it was made in a pudding cup and then capsized. I see. It's kind of round on the top of that. And they go, that's our that's our, our chocolate molten, you know, whatever. That's our. Now, they don't tell you when you order pineapple upside down cake at this place, they go, yeah, we'll give you the pineapple upside down cake. But it's not a wedge. <laughs> it's a ball with a flat bottom. It's Couple like a things. personal one. Couple things. One is. Uh, then. They give you a, a round scoop of ice cream. Now, ice cream is now coming in balls next yeah. to that thing. It's a, it's a golf ball of ice cream. Uh, the golf ball of ice cream cannot be put on top of the rounded top no, we have cake. A thing it rolls gravity. It rolls off of it. It has to sit to the side, and then as you try to peck at it, it rolls. I feel bad for the for the server who has to bring it out to you. There's no way they're going to balance that. You need like, all right. You need like cobbler or cake, you know, pie a la mode. You need the wedge that has a flat top, mm-hmm. and then you need ice cream that has a flat side to it, the bottom side, and then it can sit and melt. But then I was thinking about. So now they give you the fucking fully round golf ball of ice cream, which is by the way too small. They've gotten too. They're like quail eggs on there and this fucking thing that's not i mean when this person in hawaii said we got pineapple upside down cake i was like oh amazing God. oh this is gonna be good this is gonna be good and then i got the dome <laughs> the round dome of pineapple now did it taste like pineapple upside down cake yes did it have <laughs> pineapple in it yes was it good yes but it's in the wrong shape and the ice cream can't be set on top of it because it rolls off because it's round and the ice cream's round so two things now we're going deeper one is do you want the fucking cake in the shape god made it in answer unequivocally yes i I feel the same way about this shit as i do oh we don't have hash browns we have new potatoes I, i want hash browns there's nothing wrong with hash browns nobody got a wedge of cake and went what What kind of shape is this? It's unruly. Why isn't it round? No. Okay. Number one. Number two, if you're going to change the shape of all the desserts, the cakes and the pies, you do your own fucking highfalutin bullshit, you just fucking jack off into a ceiling fan, then you're going to have to change the shape of the ice cream scooper. The ice cream scooper, the ice cream scooper is going to need edges. Yeah. It's going to be square. I, Why are they round? Remember those old thrifty ice cream scoopers? Yeah. The ones that 
push in and then just you get a tube of ice cream. Yeah, stick that on yeah. top. I don't. Stay there. I want an edge. edge. I don't want to roll off. Look, why, why not make them edge, square? Edged foods are are always better. It's like it's like a a sandwich cut into triangles. Our mouths just respond to mm-hmm. edged foods better. So cute. I don't want a circle sandwich. No, things are yeah, and 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 like even the the ice like that you get in your old fashioned that round big round ball. Those things suck. Yes, like, I I agree. I agree. I would need I need a square ice cream scooper. I want it, I want it, I I'll want an edge. I just Corner. want I want it to look like a big over a big fuzzy die. Just just dice. Just boom. <laughs> just square. Yeah. Then I can take that and put it on top of my flat dessert and enjoy myself. Now I got the dome dessert, the golf ball piece of ice cream that's like rolling around as I'm trying to spin it around. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to grab a little of the melted ice cream and drag it into the dome. Of the pineapple upside down cake. All right, I need, I need the full shape. Oh, that is the pineapple upside down. It's a round. Ra- I, I've, I've, okay, I want, I want to go old school. I want the old shape. They're changing the shape of desserts, kids. I'm telling you, I'm sounding the alarm right now. We need now. a dessert czar. We do. And here's the other thing. Now here's a very controversial subject. You're ordering a piece of cake, right? A piece, um, by the way, you, you get the coconut cake. They're, they're changing the shape of everything. You get a piece of German chocolate ch- cake or, you know, wedge of coconut cake, like traditional cake. Cake. Do you want it served standing up or laying down? That's, that's, uh, I, can, I can answer this simply. It depends okay. on are you getting cake a la mode? No. Just okay, just cake, cake standing up, standing up, standing up as cake say, I, is stand, and should be. I feel like you when want, I cut it, it peels off. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna lay down anyway because more surface area. Because if the cake is taller than it is, that is wide, that is you're gonna want to lay it down. A, a, totally correct. It's gonna lay down on its own, but <laughs> for the pleasure of looking at it. And I'm talking just okay. aesthetics. Oh, he, aesthetics. He you with your I want to see that wedge of cake. And then I'll knock it over. I want it to lay down, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like I can regulate pastry or flour versus frosting better. I have a better uh. chance of my 60-40 split. You know what I mean? I, I can't control it when I'm going vertical. When it, when it lays down on its side, I can I can work that. I can, I can, can get work. The, the flavor balance. The you balance. Can get the, yeah, I can balance work that. Bites. It's a delicate dance. Yeah. It's a ballet. But but one that needs to be recited. <laughs> Bring your tap shoes. Yeah. So all right, I want ice cream to have. Oh, look, here's the deal with ice cream. It's got to have one flat side. It can't be a ball of ice cream. Cube, just cube it. Just give them all flat sides. Give I'm totally fine for a cube possible. of cream. First of all, waiters hate doing ice cream. I believe because it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, they have to do um, it themselves usually. Uh, and number two, do you know how difficult it would be to scoop a square? <laughs> It's physically impossible. The well, only way to do it is the thrifty model, thrifty ice cream, when pre-cut. they used to serve it in the store. The you got to... It's right. like an ice cream sandwich, but without the bread. Like, just, it, I, just pre-cut look, them. Here's the, what I want to do. I want the scooper to be like the scooper on a truck, on a, on a scoop shovel. Dump it, truck, it'll yeah. Be, it'll be rounded. No, not a dump know, truck, know, the I steam know. shovel. It'll be rounded in the front, the mouth, but the back, the walls will be slabs. And they'll dig in with the front and do it that way. Or I will accept your round ball of ice cream, which uh, there's no way to c- keep track of the thing. It scoots all over the plate. If you would like to sear it on top, if you want to flatten it out on top, if you want to give me a, a flat spot on top, Spank I'll take it. it. Yeah. I'll, I'll just hit it on the top. Give me a, give me something I can I can use. This actually might be really really easy because you could you could uh, restaurants could buy boxed ice cream and then you get that double handed knife that they have in kitchens for cutting dough. The, mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. get that and you can totally just take unbox a box of ice cream and you could <laughs> you could use that double edged <laughs> knife and messy. make those perfect ice cream squares that would D- sit Dawson, on anything. They can make a square su- scoop. We've we've sent man to the moon. We yeah. can't make a we square scoop. We can do scoop. a square scoop. We can do it. Round it in front, just have the bottom and the sides and the back be square. Yeah. That's all. It will work. Yeah, okay. I want that so badly now. I do too. And but I think we can all agree is 
pineapple upside down cake has a shape. It's a shape. <laughs> and and are you guys noticing this? Are you guys noticing this more and more? I've been complaining about it ever since me and Jimmy were at the Lucky Seven or whatever, the Hard Rock Cafe in, in Vegas and whatever their diner was at fucking three in the morning, hungover, eating. And I ordered the Huevos Rancheros, which is nothing better when you're fucking drunk and it's or three in the morning yeah. or in Vegas than seeing that Huevos Rancheros on that fucking thing. And I'm from LA and I'm like, yeah, Huevos Rancheros. That's going to hit the spot. And they brought me a breakfast burrito. And I just said, I ordered Huevos Rancheros, and they said, this is our. That is not. That is, that is not Huevos Rancheros. All right. I, this is 20, 24 years ago. I was, like, screaming at everyone, which is, you have to say something. You have to say you're not going to get what you're ordering. What you think you're getting, you're not getting. I don't know if you guys have noticed this more and more with more and more dishes and more and more people you go out to dinner with, but they order something, and then the thing shows up, and they go, Oh, this is, I ordered the club sandwich. This is brioche bread bun with no, and they go, oh, that's our club. Like, okay, more, everyone's disappointed because they ordered this thing that they're not getting, but you need to tell them they're not <laughs> getting a club sandwich. You're legally, but, morally obligated, absolutely. But <laughs> I, I've been screaming about this, Mr. Luckies. I've been screaming about this for years. No one cares, but more and more people are going out are getting a little dissatisfied with their shit that they ordered that is their own take on everything. My big nana would only go out to eat at Sizzler because she could see the pictures of what she was going to get on the board behind the counter. Yeah. Yeah. They need to bring back photos in menus. Yes. So I, that we know that if you order huevos rancheros, you are getting a breakfast burrito. I do that now. I go, I sign on to Yelp while I'm at the table and I look at pictures of all their food to make sure Smart. I see what I'm getting. See if you find, if Lucky's or Mr. Lucky's. I thought it was like 24-7. Yeah, Mr. Lucky's and... Mr. Lucky's 24-7. Vegas oh. and to Hard Rock. If, if, if someone can find a picture of their Huevos Rancheros, if those motherfuckers... Uh, there, there's a chance that the guy was just like, that's a breakfast burrito. Just tell, That's what it is, man. It's freaking three in the morning. I'm tired. I'm just saying, if you do something at your restaurant that flies in the face of conventional wisdom... You need to say something. Even if you order, like, once in a while, there's a super lazy restaurant, so when you order an omelet with, like, cheddar cheese, they just melt it on top of the omelet. Ugh. Fucking say something. You have to go, oh, you're ordering a, a egg, you're getting onions and bell pepper and cheddar cheese. I hope you know that we're so fucking lazy. We just put a strip of cheddar cheese on the top and, and melt it. That's not going to be inside of the omelet understand anything that's not in the omelet i need a heads up because i'm ordering an omelet omelet's a jacket of egg with a inside of what <laughs> i ordered film, yeah yes so if you're gonna put it on top you need to fucking say something that's uh -huh. see that that's their huevos ranch that looks like a they changed their huevos rancheros that is not what you were served oh fuck no, no I, got I got a breakfast, i got a breakfast burrito, burrito. yeah the guy I, I think the guy lied to you that's also i mean look man that's t you could say that's technically huevos rancheros but the I, idea with huevos rancheros is you hold the tortilla you don't mix the tortilla you don't get it uh, prefab. they're what? we're, we're looking at no we're looking you at fill pictures. up your own tortilla we're looking at what is what i would accept as huevos rancheros obviously yeah well, obviously my 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 wee hours tantrum at the table may have changed some I policy think you made a difference, yeah. over there i'm a difference maker <laughs> that's all i'm saying this this is all you i'm saying it. is this when you say would you like pineapple upside down cake and I say, yes, you have to go, I hope you understand that our version of a pineapple upside down cake is half a softball that tastes like pineapple. And it's served okay? right side up. Yeah. And it's served right side up. It's not going to be the one you think where you're seeing the hoops of pineapple Cherries. and the cherry and the baked crust and the da 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 da, da. And what, this half a softball that we're serving you that tastes like pineapple, uh, ice cream can find no home. A topic. <laughs> now, as it's long like as you're a, aware a of those two magnet. things, yeah. then I will go get this. My mom makes a pineapple upside oh. down cake just the way you like it. I'll oh, never make man. One. 
well, as I said about tea or hash browns or, you know, purple potatoes or whatever, was it broken? Was hash browns <laughs> broken? Was pineapple upside down? Okay. Was it ever broken? And how could it be broken for the person who orders it? Right. Okay. They know what they want. All right. That was a great news segment. Yeah. <laughs> Dallas Jenkins is a director, he's a writer, he's uh, a very successful guy with a, a series called the, the Chosen, which is huge uh, show. Huge mammoth show. We'll take a quick break. We'll talk to Dallas right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop, earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, Sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O Rewards next time you visit, and you can start earning points on your first purchase. Sign up for both email and tax and get even more out of your membership. And right now, members receive two times, three times, up to eight times O Rewards points on select purchases. Those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster. You receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'ReillyAuto.com. Via tour experiences are what people love most about travel. I mean, God, taking my son fishing in Alaska, that was so amazing. I'll never forget it. Via tour, it's a website and app for booking travel experiences, like seeing Stonehenge or a walking tour of Rome. Over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. Millions of real travelers' reviews. So you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. With Viator, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. So let's get out there and experience life, shall we? Download the Viator app now and use the code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences you won't forget. Do more with Viator. Dallas Jenkins, filmmaker, director, writer. The Chosen is the name of the series. Runaway smash hit. Season four will premiere. Well, I think. Next year. Yeah. yeah, Well, uh, 2024 will give you the date as we get uh, closer. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So, how did this start for you? Can I first say something? I want to point out that. I'm about to talk about a show about Jesus, the most famous and influential figure in history. Nothing I say is going to be as important as what you guys just talked about. Desserts. About dessert? I completely <laughs> and the shape, agree. I, everything you were saying, I was in the waiting room just cheering. They're even doing things now where they give you the, a flat fork that's not curved. Mm. And so you go to, to, to slice the cake. And it's also delivered on like a small plate, not a big plate. So it's like kind of boxed in. Yeah. yeah. And you'll you'll do that first slice. The ice cream then falls onto that tiny little space that you've just created. There's not enough room for it. What are we and doing? And because the fork is flat and not curved, you do like a, 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 a like a cut into it. It's not rounding off the, your your bite. It's just kind of creating half of a. A yeah. little bite of the whole. I, I just wanted to point out that no, I, listen, I appreciate what you're doing for I'm the gonna, country. I'm going to see you and raise you one and this, which is everyone thinks I'm nuts all the time about everything. What I'm <laughs> saying is, is it's a standard. It's also sort of the way grandma did it. And getting rid of the way grandma baked is right up there with tearing down the statue of George Washington yes. or Christopher Columbus. It's all in the same hamper, which is we must get rid of everything that was yeah. so that we can enact our new world order. But sometimes it's just for the sake of getting rid yeah, of Yeah, nothing something. traditional is good. We must upend the apple cart. We must. 
Yes, it's never like, oh, the guy who bakes the pineapple upside down cake that's shaped like half a softball. He's a devout Christian. Oh, no. I know what that guy, that guy's drenched in patchouli. I know exactly how he fucking votes and he's fucking everything up. It's all out of San Francisco. I talked to a chef once who just went, all this bullshit, it all started in San Francisco, and it just made its leaked out like a, like a lab yeah, no, leak. Yeah. No normal eater has been consulted on any of these new decisions. No. So, yeah. That's a good point. So, so you're traditional in your desserts yeah. and in your approach to filmmaking. Absolutely. So Thanks on that note, uh, how did this all get started? So The Chosen, uh, it's the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ. There's been movies, there's been miniseries, but there's never actually been a multi-season show. I think the other thing that sets it apart is it's a, a very uh, human, authentic portrayal as opposed to kind of the formal Bible projects that you've seen, even the good ones over the years. Uh, they, there tends to be a bit of an emotional distance, a bit of a stained glass window, formal approach. Uh, this show is inspired by my favorite shows, shows like Friday Night Lights and West Wing and stuff like that. Just uh, that's kind of the approach to this that makes it feel a little bit different. But the way that it started was, ironically enough, considering our conversation, quite untraditional. Uh, we we did it completely outside the box, went directly to the audience. Uh, it was crowdfunded. Season one was crowdfunded based on a short film I did for my church and uh, generated $10 million from over 16,000 people around the world uh, based on this little thing I shot on my friend's farm in Illinois, 20 minutes from my house. And uh, we decided to make it free. So that was a unique thing. I mean, everything about this show has been kind of outside the system, outside the box. And uh, and lo and behold, over the last couple of years, it's turned into a bit of a bit of a phenomenon. Do you find that there's a sort of a course correction which is, I keep sort of citing, you know, the number one late night show is Gutfeld. Right. Now, that would have been unthinkable several years ago. The top of the charts are country right. hits right now. Uh, incredible success of a, of a Tucker Carlson. And let's, let's just, I'll just lay this out. Tucker Carlson is conservative. Don Lemon is progressive. They both got thrown off the air the same night you're never going to hear from Don Lemon again because people don't want to hear what that asshole has to say. You will not hear it. I, I, he has nothing to say. People, people always look at me like, oh, come on, come on, come on. No, you fight, you get, get a hold of me. Well, let's go back six months. Go back to when they got fired. It's been Tucker Carlson blowing up the internet and not a peep out of Don, and, and you will not hear a peep for, out of Don. Well, there's nothing to say that isn't already being said. That's right. You know, it's not that he, that's right. He's he, not interesting. Yes, he can, that, he can yeah. physically talk. Yes, right. but, he, but but we, we have everyone else on the View will just say exactly what Don Lemon will say. Sure. So we don't need Don Lemon. But my point is, is there's a change, and. It's getting back to some sort of conservative. Sometimes it's religious. Sometimes it's just the way grandma used to make pineapple upside down cake. But there's a move, sure, a distinct move toward that. And I feel like um, Madison Avenue should kind of wake up to that because Bud Light just got their ass kicked because they're so tone deaf with who Americans are and what they really want. And yes, the average Bud Light drinker is not down with Dylan Mulvaney. Right. But you guys don't understand that because there's a handful of college-educated chicks who have decided it's a good idea. And and most Americans aren't for, you know, transing kids and not telling their parents. Like, they have to – politicians and Madison Avenue and Hollywood – need to kind of wake up to the fact that there's this whole group of people and they're voting with their wallets. Yeah, and that's that's for sure. We came at a right at the right time. There was a bit of a of a I wouldn't call it an overcorrection because I think that implies that it's going too far in one way. I think this is actually a, just a, a, a moderate correction towards like what you're talking about, what's more traditional. And uh, I, I love some of the shows that are kind of the opposite of what I do. I mean, I love Succession on on, on HBO Max. I, I love a lot of the stuff that people on the coasts like, but there is a massive, massive audience uh, that has been underserved, ironically enough, uh, for a long time. And I, th I do think we're benefiting a little bit from that. The fact that we're not necessarily traditional, that we didn't come through the, the same streaming platforms that uh, most shows are coming through, was actually to our advantage with yeah. the audience. They actually, that was a, 
a, a value add. I think there's a lot. There's a stigma when you say that. Oh, I'm putting out a, a show about Jesus, or like, oh, oh, I'm in a Christian rock band. Oh, people right. already know what we're gonna sound like, or at least right. they have an idea. So if you put out a show about Jesus, people think they already know. Like, I mean, I, I went to Catholic school first eight years, you know, of school. I I saw the Davy and Goliath episodes. I, I've seen all the right. reenactments of of Jesus stuff. Me so too. I, right. So like I. I <laughs> I, I remember all of it, and I would never watch any of that anymore. Like, I watched David Goliath. Yeah. David Goliath was always like, uh, we get to church faster if we took that guy's car. I don't know, David. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole show. Exactly. So making a show about Jesus now, and if you're saying like you're inspired by Friday Night Lights, and it's actually a high-quality show. That's been the key to take it from – see, initially, the first year or two – it was very niche. The audience was niche. The audience was exactly what you're talking about. We love the fact that it's outside the system. But now that it, it's starting to reach the mass, it's starting to go outside of the box of just the, the, the faith audience because of the fact that it doesn't feel like all the things we just described. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was just in Brazil two weekends ago. The show has exploded in Brazil. I, I've been uh, right now for the last two months, it's been in the top five on Amazon on all, across all genres, Congrats. all sty uh, 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 styles of, of project. Um, half of our, you know, over half of our cast and crew are not traditional believers. You know, some of them are. Uh, you know, atheists even, and 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 I've, I was going to talk to you about this at one point because I've I've heard your uh, rant on, on atheism and and versus the the crappy arguments of of uh, of religion, and I, f I found it fascinating. This is a show that you can watch that doesn't feel like a church service. It doesn't feel like it's uh, it's it's imposing religion on you. It's a if this happened, this is what it would have looked like, and then you can decide for yourself. What well, that means for you, you know? You know, I think much like, it's going to seem a little out of left field, but like electric cars. Um, when people were trying to introduce or build their own electric cars, you know, 15, 20 years ago, they looked like weird slabby boxes. You know, they right. weren't, they didn't look like Audis or Mercedes, you know? And so, like, when you take a group, so Hollywood is very progressive and very liberal and the opposite of conservative and religious, right? So they're going to get a big head start. Like they have a big head start in comedy because conservatives sure. and right-wingers and like Fox viewers don't, they're not skilled in it. So there's a learning curve, you know? So what you're going to see is all these really slick, funny, well-produced, you know, shows on, on the left in the comedy department <laughs> And then the right wing comedy version is going to be like, get her done. You know, like it's going to be a kind of a, they're literally 25 years behind. Yeah. So the stuff doesn't look that slick. They don't get the best and the brightest. They don't have access to the funniest writers. Right. You know, those guys are all working for Colbert, right? But as time goes on, like the electric car, you're going to start seeing them get a little slicker and a sure. little nicer, yeah. and they, they, they start to look a lot better. Yeah. And now they rival the other non-electric cars because they they got they were behind. You know, the internal combustion motors; those cars they had a hundred year head start, right? And there's no way they're going to make it up in four years. But it's been long enough now where the the art and the creativity on the right while while still lagging behind and certainly in the comedy department is starting to catch up and not stuff. even just electric cars like take kia and hyundai for instance right, right? like i i look at cars on the free i'm like oh those look good and those are their kias and hyundai's who, which were garbage right like so well, the together. same thing is true the audience they they so they can survive for several years because the audience is uh, giving them extra credit for the message. So, in the w whether it's a faith-based project, who, where they're going to uh, appreciate, they don't need the quality to be great because the message is so unique and so for them, they love it. Same thing is true of electric cars. The people who are religious about electric cars, well, they'll buy one because, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but I'm so behind the cause, I'm willing to put up with the lack of quality. So that also can kind of sometimes, in, in many ways, give. Uh, cause the uh, the learning curve to go even longer because there's not necessarily a motive to be better because you're selling stuff. We're trying to 
like in our in our secret rooms talking about how can we make this better we're saying we got to make this better faster because if we're going to actually be appreciated by people outside of just the choir uh, we do have to be better and i think that's true of the electric cars as well true of the like you said the kia is to cross the chasm to be uh, to, to to reach the masses outside of just the niche you do have to you do have to be better and you have to be influenced by some of the best influencers uh you look like you played a little ball in high school and in college you just you strike me as a look yeah tight end maybe defensive end <laughs> possibly outside linebacker i'm not sure long snapper uh no. not a long snapper no uh basketball was my primary thing uh but yeah played some football played yeah did it all it was, sports was my primary obsession growing up and then i saw one floor of the cuckoo's nest when i was in high school and that uh that movie changed my life and made me want to make movies and wow. tv i think they showed one flew over the cuckoo's nest when i was in high school as well for some reason, even though I'm 10 years older, I, I just remember yeah. that they could show a movie that the teachers liked or something in the auditorium or something, and I saw that. Wait, am I the, am I the only person that's ever watched the claymated series Davy and Goliath for purely entertainment purposes, oh, not, okay. because it's cool. not because yeah. it was being foisted yeah, on me. I watched it all the time. Loved Davy and Goliath. You watched it because there, but it was because there was nothing else on, right? Yeah, but in my opinion, it was, I would say it was better than the Brady Bunch. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. wow. It was pretty legit. <laughs> I do, you remember, do you remember the music? I almost, think I can do I it. Can, I can almost All hear right, it you in my try, head. Try your version of it. Let me try mine. It's it's orchestral. It's like mm -hmm. na, 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 na. no. All but right, all I can do ready? is hello, Davy. All right. It was bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Okay, yeah. That's my recollection of it from being six six years old. That's all. That's all <laughs> I got. It's not in syndication, right now, as far as I can tell. That's it. Yeah. So that's a that's a well known hymn. In, uh, oh, is that yeah, where yeah. they? Wasn't a feel alike or sound alike so they could clear it. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was put together. Yeah, how'd they get 12, the rights to that? It's 500 yeah. years old. They can do that. Wow. Yeah, it was a crazy cartoon. Put on. Who put it? Who invested in that? Or who sponsored that? The Church of. Was it, it Mormon or something? It had to be a church. I, I, it was Mormon? I, I don't think I, Mormon. I don't think so. I, it was school. put up by somebody at the end. You can you can tell. I. They wouldn't even like a Florida list. And could you imagine uh, they wouldn't even Florida imagine them? Ever. They would ban that in California now. Like they won't even let Prager oh. you. They don't even well, like I'm Prager you. Why did so? Why did you watch it? Lutherans, Lutherans, the Lutherans. I knew it. Uh. Yes. That's on the Protestant side of things. Yeah, I had no choice. <laughs> uh, I had. I did not read, and so all I could do was watch TV, and TV was a novelty in that there was just people moving and talking. <laughs> There's motion. <laughs> and it didn't really matter if I liked it or agreed with it or knew it or it was good. Something was happening. It didn't involve reading. And I got to sit there and watch it. And so I would just, as a young atheist, watch Davy and Goliath. And somebody, I guess, in somewhere in the back of my mind, somebody had created something and I was going to partake. Right. Like, I've always been, you know, and I don't know why more people are, are not more this way, but I would stare at a billboard or stare at an advertisement or stare at a car design or something and try to figure out who made these decisions, how did they arrive at this place, right. who, who was behind this. And most people's attitude was always like, who who cares? Shut up. So what? You know, they was always like really dismissive of everything. Like, people's problem is, is they're like, I like horses. And then that's about it. So unless we're talking about a horse, I'm not fucking interested. And then you go, well, how come this? And then why that? And they go, I don't know. Who cares? Why are you obsessed? And I'm like, because I'm interested in everything. Because humans created and people made decisions. And I kind of like to learn from them. Like, I'd like to see the stuff I don't like. Right. So I know what not to do or that I don't like. I'd like to see stuff that's good that can be kind of inspiring. Like... Right. I don't know. Did you like Dave and Goliath? I mean, do you remember? I mean, you remember the song? You remember, like you watched it more than once. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on, 
and I would watch it, and I don't remember it being entertaining or funny. I remember the I remember the lessons. Right. Like I remember there was an episode where like there was a guy who was going to walk out in front of traffic. Like he's just like stepping off the curb and like Davey grabbed him and was like admonishing him. Like, what are you doing? Don't, and the guy turned out to be blind. So then Davey <laughs> learned a lesson that he oh, shouldn't wow. judge That's... and yell at the guy. <laughs> Rod Sterling, right? That one. <laughs> yeah. I remember being like six back in, you know, Menominee, Wisconsin or something going, all right, so eh, don't judge people. <laughs> too quickly you know maybe well, he has that, his reasons and that's been your premise right is is as an atheist you're saying i like the lessons of christianity i just oh, don't yeah. believe you have to believe in god to if i to had like a magic wand i would i would come down with a tablet with the 10 commandments on it i would stand up at the super bowl and i would scream into a microphone all you assholes have to go off of this every one of you Every one of you degenerate pricks has to go <laughs> off of this. You understand? I don't, but everyone else does. And we'll be living in a utopia in about 20 minutes if people just did, if people just followed the golden rule. Right. If people just said, and I don't know if the golden rule is even biblical, although it's, it's, yes, I mean, it's, the, it oldest, it's the oldest yeah. thought on the planet. Just don't do what you don't want to be done to you. It's right. pretty, basically the new, ten, the new Testament tenement of uh, it's yeah. do, do unto, unto others. others. Yeah, you would have them yeah just yes. yeah. if everyone just said, there's just one thing, just do the golden rule. Just don't, if you don't like, you know, if you don't want to pull up into a Costco with a shopping cart parked in the slot you wanted to park in, and if you wish that person put it back with the other shopping carts, then you do that. You do it with everything all the time, and we'll be living in utopia in like 15 minutes. Yeah. It's the libertarian philosophy. Don't hurt others. Don't take their stuff. Yes. We, you know, Jesus goes a little further, but yeah, you're, well, like when you were, you grew up in Menominee? No, I was, I was there. I was Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Oh, okay. I was, I was, uh, God, where else? Uh, I was all over the place for like a, a little while. Here's all right. You want to know the best way to go through life? Well, not the best way for you to go through life, but ultimately it is. Ult ultimately it is. Okay. okay Forget right. about the golden rule. Forget serve, about serve it. cake and, and a wedge. Forget about the golden rule. Just, just remove yourself from every equation. Just mm -hmm. remove you. Don't like it's not. Well, you wish if that was your parking spot that that if that it's not your parking spot, not anyone's parking spot. Just remove yourself from any every every argument, every dust up, every discussion. It's like, look, I know you're pissed off at the person <coughs> who's at the gate of United Airlines because they shut the door and they're not letting you onto the flight. But that you're pissed off. But that's really because you're getting. Locked off. Do you agree with the policy overall that the door has to get shut at a certain time? And if the answer is yes, and you're on that flight, then let's not have completely different approaches to life versus you're on that flight versus you're standing in the terminal arguing with the person who shut the door and the gates closed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just remove yourself from the equation. It, by the way, you think much more clearly. Sure. And I was... Um, I was just in, uh, I was out of town, it was a hotel room, and uh, I had a glass, and the glass had uh, coffee and cream and whatever in it, and I was standing, and I went over to the bathroom sink, and I started, started rinsing it out, and the person I was in the room with said, why are you rinsing the cup out? And I said, because I rinse cups out. And they said, but that's not your cup. And I said, that's that, I'm still the person who rin I rinse cups out. Not my cup, your cup, my cup, his cup. I just rinse cups out. That's Now, it's stupid. It doesn't make a difference. And yeah, you fucking pay enough. They could go rinse their own cup out. But I just rinse cup out. It's cups out. I don't rinse my cups out or yours. I just do cups. <laughs> and if you just go through life that way, it's it's a you'll think clearly because you're not you don't realize how much your thoughts are corrupted by yourself, by factoring in what you want. Like a nine-year-old who wants shotgun both directions to the movie theater and back and the kid brother. You're so clouded by what you want. Remove yourself, yeah. <coughs> act accordingly. We will be living in a utopia. 
there it is. It's problem it's solved. Already, but yeah, that and, and we'll end with yeah. in the chosen. Uh, we were now th- you know three seasons have been released. We just finished filming the fourth. Uh, that is that was the consistent message of Jesus: death to self. You know, put you, he didn't say the words "remove yourself from the equation" or uh, "rinse all the cups," but it was. <laughs> In that vein, it was it was the idea of you what you want. You feel entitled to be angry. You feel entitled to overcome oppression. You feel entitled to be released from whatever struggle you're going through, and that's and, and you think that I'm here to take all of that away, and I'm not. I'm here to take you away from yourself for for you to die to yourself, and for you to give me your heart. And so, yeah, it's it's a. I'm gonna maybe steal the line <laughs> in a future season. Rinse 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 the cups, not my cup or your cup. <laughs> Just the cups. Wisdom, and Wisdom from Adam Carolla. It's not... See, I think people think it's being magnanimous. Like, oh, you're so much better than everyone. It's an easier life. It's like saying, don't lie, and you're never going to have to remember all these stories. And it's like, well, that makes you noble. You're not a liar. No, I don't lie because it's easier. I don't yeah. have to fucking get caught and go back and check my notes all the time. Just be consistent it's, a, it's an easier life. Just rinse the mug. Don't lie. You don't Imagine having to toggle back and forth between my mode and your mode yeah. all the time. Like, wait a minute. Whose mug is this? Wait, should I rinse this? Who paid for this mug? Like, did, did, yeah, there's, just a, one there's, mug. A fr- there's a freedom in it. For sure. There's a freedom in it. Yeah. You just do the same thing you do at your at every single time. I walk out of a, a green room before I go on stage. I shut the lights to the green room. And then Mike August yells, I was watching the game. What the fuck's <laughs> going on? Here. No, I shut the lights. And then people are always like, why you shut the lights? Because I shut the lights. And they go, but that's not your theater. And I go, I don't care. You don't have to pay the electric bill. Doesn't matter. I just have, because then when I'm at home, I don't have to think about right. it. It's just you shut the lights, you rinse the mug. Stay that's consistent. A, that's yeah. who you are. Do not have a separate mode for who's paying the electric bill. And who's not paying the electric bill? I think we have that scene from Dave and Goliath, by the way. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, it's a oh, it's a deaf kid, not a blind kid. Oh, that's that's what it was. Yeah, sorry. So he's yelling. Yeah. Here comes a fire truck. Hmm. <laughs> oh, an ambulance. Get back. Huh? Ambulance. Get back. Can't Come hear. Back. He's dead. Man, that dog is. That dog saved that kid's life. Yeah. <laughs> Barking in his ear. What's the matter with you? Dave's gonna scold him. Don't you listen to anybody ever? If you got run over, they'd blame you. Well, I did forget the whistle and the right stop signal. You told him. You hollered. Well? Kid just walks. Wow. Walks away, crosses the street. You didn't even say thanks. So yeah, I would say the deaf kid, deaf kid is, could have been a little more polite. Yeah. You can yeah. tell someone's trying to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I do I, your part in, in, <laughs> in informing him. It's, it's it just, it goes back to the, to the restaurant. Tell the, tell the customer. The, yeah. Uh, Ravos, uh, deaf people should have a deaf hat. Yeah. He should at least say, <laughs> like a big should, cone. He should you say, know what I mean? you should say, you need to know you're not going to get what you're expecting from me. Yeah. Or at least that stick with the string that goes through it. <laughs> But folds. I don't know why you can carry a full size cane anywhere you want, but the deaf cane that thing's got to fit in your pocket. Is there that a deaf thing's got to. Oh, I didn't the, know. I didn't no, know there's, the, a, deaf there's, cane. there's a blind cane. What, what? Oh, sorry, the blind. Okay, okay. yeah, the <laughs> deaf hat. Sorry, I'm getting my deaf and my dumbs all all screwed up. My blind. The blind cane folds up into nothing. Yes. That's the one that's got the string. The deaf hat is what we need. Right. <laughs> because that would have saved Davy a lot of problem if he saw the guy wearing the deaf hat. He'd know to signal some other way than vocally. Yeah, I think two lessons could have been taught at the end of that episode. If you know, don't judge, but also if you're deaf, give yeah. people a, some sort of indication. Deaf hat. Yeah. <laughs> they could have solved a lot more. Yeah. Also, uh, yeah. So that was the setup. I think it was Act Three where we find out we find out that he's, he's so deaf. Act Two. Davy's just stewing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think, but I don't think they did the deaf guy voice. <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I would have been impressed by that when I was in Menominee at six. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think they did that. Yeah. But I don't know. How did he? Oh, how somebody did, told him. This is 
This is where we find out he's deaf. At this guy bar? puts the pieces together. The name um, of the episode is Louder, Please. Yes, he's at Mr. Jenkins, you know. Mr. Reed, shop. did you ever hear of such a dumb kid? Well, I think you just said two key words, Davey. Hear and dumb. What? From all you tell me, I think the boy is deaf. And because he can't hear, he's dumb. Not the kind of dumb you mean. Dumb meaning he can't talk. Could that be it? Remember how he acted? Remember? Didn't hear us ask what time it was. Didn't hear me bark at him. This is incredible. And didn't hear the ambulance siren. He tried to tell us he couldn't hear. Mm, not and sure that's true. we made fun of him on the way to school. Mm. Didn't know, Davy. I don't care. Dad says never make fun of anyone, and I did. Dad, I still don't see why he can't talk. If you never heard how words sound, you wouldn't know how to make sounds. Oh, some deaf people can learn right. to talk. And so if they made Dave and Goliath today, every third story would be about a kid transitioning and we can't judge <laughs> and they want to drag Queen Story Hour at the school and Davey says it's a bad idea. Like They'd have to hit some other topicalities here, right? And, and they're also going to ask me, did you get to play clips of The Chosen on your appearance of Adam Crow? Right. Well, we played clips. <laughs> <laughs> We played two clips, long clips. <laughs> it was just a, a show from 40 years ago. <laughs> Somebody brought up Davy and Goliath, and that was a big oh, mistake. Yeah, Adam just dad. went down the rabbit hole yes. of his childhood. Well, when do we... Now, how's the budget work? Who's the... How's the money raised? Is it is who's the who's behind it? Who's the studio behind yeah. it? So season one, uh, totally crowdfunded mm-hmm. uh, by these sixteen thousand people around the world, and so we that was ten million dollars allowed us to do season one, and then uh, we after season one we were we were charging people to watch it, and that was difficult. They didn't want to download a new app; it couldn't find it anywhere, and uh, so we did a. Uh, we put on YouTube for for eight live streams in a row. Just de- debuted. This is when COVID hit. This is when mm-hmm. the show really started to take off. Is during COVID. So I hosted live streams where I'd show an episode and say, "Here's the thing: we've decided to make the show free, and you can contribute to it if you want or not." Um, and that night, our income quadrupled, and the next night, wow. it doubled. And so, like Radiohead. Yeah. So it, it became. So the show has been free for you know it's it, the whole run, and it'll always be free. And uh, and so our budget for season four was about forty million dollars total. How many episodes? So eight episodes, so about wow. five per episode, which is That's huge big. for a free show. But it's oh, yeah. it's small compared to like you know Game of Thrones or Stranger Things or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's people choosing to donate if they want or not. And now that of course it's, no Amazon, of course it's on Amazon, it's on Peacock. Season one's on Netflix, so they pay license fees for it now. Mm-hmm. So that contributes, but nothing generates more money. And when I do a live stream directly to the audience, I'll do something on, we'll have 100,000 people come on to, to listen and watch an episode. And I'll say, you know, just a reminder that, uh, you know, for us to finance the next season, um, you know, if you can't afford to, don't do it. But uh, but if you can, uh, and if you're interested, go ahead. And that's how we that's awesome. how we generate. It allows us, of course, to keep the control, allows us to uh, control the content. And then, uh, but then now that it's on, it's really hitting we, we, we do recognize there's a ceiling to how much, how big it can get that way. It's been on, like I said, it's been on Amazon now for two months, been in the top 10 uh, season three because uh, people, there's a, there is a group of people who are like, I want to watch this and I've heard it's good and I've heard it's not, you know, uh, what I've typically assumed it would be, uh, but I don't want to have to go look for it. Is it on Prime? Is it on? And, 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 and that's allowed us to reach a, a, an even bigger audience. Let me pitch you because I've done a little bit of acting, you know. Yeah. I'm not a fine actor, but I've done enough. Surly chariot mechanic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cigar chomping guy, a little bit of a Brooklyn attitude. Yeah. You know? I'm not saying yes or no right now. I'm just saying think, no, I'll put a think, pin in it. think about that. I will say there is mean? a moment that I think you'd love, which is at the very beginning of season two, the disciples can't find Jesus. Um, he's supposed to be preaching here soon and they can't find him. And they end up finding him. He's under a wagon, and he is fixing, like he's he's fixing an axle, and he's getting some pitch to to put on it. And he, and uh, because Jesus, as we know, was raised by a a carpenter, he was a he was a craftsman, he was a handyman, 
So we show a lot of that. I mean, this is a Jesus that, yes, we show him as doing miracles and uh, as the Son of God, but also someone who laughs with his friends. He dances. I mean, the first miracle in the Bible is essentially, you know, turning water to wine. It's He was doing a favor for his friends because his mom asked him to. It's that kind of stuff that we're showing the humanity of Jesus as well as the divinity, and that allows it to feel like, the like again, there's like three or four scenes that I think Adam Carolla would be like, oh, yeah, they got that right. That's how the... That's how he'd fix an axle. Jesus, <laughs> you know, Je- oh, there's uh, me. That's behind the scenes. That's me working through the scene. Yeah, this this scene showing Jonathan, the guy who plays uh, Jesus, yeah. what we're doing. It was the axle. I told my brother it was the axle. I <laughs> did. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm reading the dialogue. Wow. Yeah. This is episode one of season two. That we're, This is the behind the scenes stuff, yeah. I guess the space saver spare wouldn't work well on those old time carts, right? Because it'd be leaning over too far. Yeah, yeah. Never thought about that. Is uh, so to answer your question, yes. Yeah, cameo, Uh, cameo. (laughs) But uh, but Jesus is already doing some of the. He's already hands on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did uh, where should people go if they want to? find out or contribute or learn more so yeah. website yeah if they've never seen it if they're you know again it's on prime the first three seasons are on amazon prime they're on peacock season one's on netflix um it's to- if, if it, it's totally free and easy on the chosen app you just look up the chosen anywhere you get your apps it's very easy to find and it's totally free totally easy to watch we don't even require an email address um so yeah we make it as easy to find as possible it's been translated in to you know dozens and dozens of languages so it's international now and uh but yeah we want to we want to make it as easy to find as possible and then season four uh comes out it's it debuts in theaters uh, wow that's the thing we did that's the other thing we did that was unique like so in season three we debuted episodes one and two in theaters and we're uh, third in the box office that weekend it was funny that that morning when they were announcing the Friday morning when the trades were predicting the box office for the weekend, we weren't even listed as as being released. Yeah, they're snobs. And then that night, the headline was shocking, you know, uh, (laughs) third place finish Yeah, from this TV show um, that decided to release in theaters because our fan base is very rabid. So we wanted to get them into into theater so yeah we're uh, season four launches in theaters in February and then comes uh, to to streaming in uh, March around 2024. Well, it uh, it gives me hope. I really do. I love these kinds of stories. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, with, in this era we're living in, there's plenty of reasons to get depressed. But uh, then there's plenty of reasons to kind of get your hopes up and go, yeah, these people are doing this and that guy's saying that. And they found a following and people are saner than I thought they may be. Yeah. And good. All right. Um, I am going to be in Vegas tonight at Jimmy Kimmel's Club's second show added so you can come on out to the late show if you like or the early show i think 7 30 and i don't know 7 30 9 30 something like that you can go to amcarola.com for all the live shows uh the chosen dallas jenkins congratulations on that and uh dre dimitao you can uh, check her out on only fans and also uh check out her gangster goddess broad dash hold on broad dash cast Dot com. Oh, that's the merch line. Sorry. And the wine as well. Thanks, Dallas. Yeah. Appreciate you having me. Until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Chris Maxwell and Dallas Jenkins and Dre DiMatteo saying, Mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>